Hello, Teocon4 here. I'm going to be giving a quick demonstration on how you can apply the light exoskeleton to your own characters in your project. So here we've got a basic project, simply has the third person start example content, and we've added the light exoskeleton into it. So in order to add this to our third person character that we're starting with here, we will edit third person character, open up our character. So this is what we want to add it to. The prerequisite that we need to do is find our character's mesh and skeleton, open up the skeleton. Now here we're going to need to add a couple of sockets. In this case, upper arm R, add a socket, and just set this up around here, a little bit above the shoulder. Upper arm L, add socket. Then add one to the each thigh. And put that down next to the knee, roughly. You can uh, take the socket's location and copy it from here. Copy and paste in order to make them symmetrical more so, but I'm just quick and roughing it for this example. Add sockets on each calf. And with this, we've got all of these sockets needed for the exoskeleton to work. So we'll go back to our character. And we're going to add child actor under the mesh we're going to take this and we're going to call this one exo legs control w to make a copy of it exo arms exo legs is light exo legs set the actor exo arms light exo arms. You don't have to use both of them. You can just use whichever one you want on your character. Next, we're going to go into the event graph. Add a begin play node. If you already had one, you could hold S to create a sequence node and add this as an addition or into the middle of your chain, but we'll just uh, add it directly here. So hold control to create a reference to each of these. This is a component which will itself create the child actor. So to get a reference to the actor itself, we get child actor. Control C, Control V for each of these. Now we need to set reference skeleton. We'll take our character's mesh and set that as the reference skeleton. And with this, they will now know to attach to or to follow our character's skeleton. So, just like this, our character can walk around. And it works. Now, as an example, let's take this upper arm L socket and move that up here, for example, just to show what this does. Because what this does is it controls where the socket will try to rest. You'll notice now on the left arm, that one's a bit higher up, while on the right arm, it's still closer into the shoulder. It could, of course, only actually bend out so far, but that roughly just controls where the joint will try to be uh, during the normal animations. It won't always be exactly there, it'll just try to be there. Also noticing some wobbliness on the right leg there. That yeah, socket, make that one slightly lower, and the thigh probably bring that in and push it forward a bit. It needs to be 
know properly which direction to point forward. And there we go. So, that's the basic gist of all you actually need to add to your character in order to get this uh, working. Now, there is some more stuff which you can do. For example, what if your character isn't using the exact uh, default skeleton and you want to be able to do this? Like, Or what if you're in Unreal Engine 5 and you've got a different default skeletal set up on the mannequin? Well, it's fairly easy to do that. Go up here to Class Settings, Interfaces, Add, Exo underscore BPI. Hit Compile. Once this is done, you can go down here and open Interfaces. And there should be the Get Exo Bone Names. These are effectively all the different bones that this thing will be using between the legs and the hands. Arms. Uh, if you wish to modify this, put in your own character's bones here and set True if the value is changed. If so, then say on a Unreal Engine 5, if I recall, Spine 05 is the new equivalent of the Spine 03, so you would have to fill everything in with whatever's used on your character. It doesn't matter if it's the exact same skeleton hierarchy, you just need an equivalent bone to fill each role that the skeleton knows to follow. Because the skeleton, it doesn't care if you've got two spines or five spine bones between here. It doesn't care if you've got some extra set of arm bones going on in your shoulder, or if you just go straight from Spine 3 to the shoulder, no clavicle or anything. All it needs to know is roughly what each of these locations are for where it can actually stick the uh, various parts to, such as it needs to know forearms, so it knows where to attach those to. It needs to know your feet, so it needs to know what to attach this to, but it doesn't require everything else to be exactly the default skeleton hierarchy. So this is how you can set this. Um, and while we're here, a quick bit of other examples might as well show. Go over to the Light Exoskeleton, Demo, Third Person BP, Blueprints, and here we can see the Demo character. Pretty much exactly the same as we've got here, though you'll notice there's a few extra things, such as here we've got the ability to toggle the visibility. Pretty much this just says, do you want to see the arms or legs only? Fairly straightforward. Update the Exo visibility. This one, uh, for the arms, it checks whether or not you want the spine to be visible. So do I want the entire actor to be visible, or is it the only the uh, arm section we hide the spine? Because presumably you might not want to see the spine if there's no actual lower leg section, you only have upper arms. So exosuit arms. Spine visible has that little option there. And there's an update that you can call to trigger it during runtime. The materials, each of these has its own various materials. Let's go take a look at one here, and the default things let you cycle through them. This is the folder with the materials. Each of these has some options you'll notice here on the right, so you can take these and mess around with them in order to get a slightly different look or whatever if you want. Fairly straightforward. Uh, in most cases, you if you want to make new ones, you can control W in order to add a new one, and then you could add that to your character. Going back to the late exoskeleton, probably one last real point of note is you can look inside of these to find various events and options. For example, yes, there's the basic updating of materials, but you've also got options so that they can generate a dynamic material. If you set this to true, then you could easily uh, from the character, simply get a reference to it, and then get a reference to the existing dynamic material and make easy set parameter modifications. For example, you can set vector parameter value, and then this is basically where you put the parameter name and your new value, and that's pretty much these. So you could put in color one, and then you'd put in a new color value, and you could change that during runtime if you want to make stuff happen on them. So that's pretty much everything there really is to know about actually using and setting this up. Hopefully that will help. And if there's anything that's confusing, be sure to drop by and ask in the comments below. Hopefully this does work for you and have a pleasant and healthy and productive day. Till next time, everybody. Jericho on four out.